when you see that they say they have a bold vision for America, have you heard that vision yet? No, I really haven't, Glenn. And here's the weird thing about all this is you, you have the entire Democratic campaign running on a kind of collective amnesia where they say that Kamala Harris will do this thing on day one or Kamala Harris has a vision to accomplish that thing. And then you realize that Kamala Harris has been the vice president for three and a half years, and right. she has affirmatively made all of these problems worse, not better, during her time in office, right? So you can't right. say Kamala Harris is going to secure the border because she opened it up. You can't say Kamala Harris is going to lower inflation because she cast a deciding vote on programs that increased inflation. So I think right. that this is just not something that the American people buy. And fi- final observation, Glenn, and again, I haven't seen the whole thing. But there's a lot of talk about unity, and I remember the old editor's trope of show, don't tell. So they're telling a lot about unity, but they're actually, in their, the rest of their remarks, they're showing a very dark vision of half the country, where they basically say, if you vote for Donald Trump because you want to change in this country's direction, you're a bad person. And if you don't see that he's anti-immigrant and anti-black and anti-woman, then you're a bad person. You can't win an election telling Americans right. that they're bad people because they want to pay lower costs for groceries and housing. You win an election by persuading people. And I haven't seen a whole lot of that at the DNC. But I, 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 I wonder, though, with the power of the press in lockstep like they are, I've never seen anything like this. Uh, I mean, for instance, it was the Democrats that were, are, are now saying that Kamala is going to fix the economy. But it's those same Democrats that were telling us a month ago that you're a conspiracy theorist or you just don't get it if you think the economy is bad because the economy is fine. So how, how do you win um, uh, and get your argument heard when 80% of the news is bad on you and 88% on them is great? You know, I think we just have to keep on telling our story and telling the truth, Glenn. And that's you know something we do through paid media, commercials, digital advertising, and so forth. And it's something we do in the mainstream media, even though they're not fair. You know, I did five interviews last night with NBC, ABC, CNN, CBS, and so forth. And I, I think that the, the one thing that really differentiates President Trump and me from our opponents is we're willing to take our message to hostile media. And so, yeah... They're going to be critical right. of what we say afterwards, but we're at least able to get the message out there because we're willing to engage. And, you know, I, Glenn, you, you raise a really important point here, which is that if you're an American citizen and you've paid attention to this election, you'd be forgiven for having a headache from the ricocheting message of the Democratic Party. A month ago, it was the Biden economy was great. Don't believe your lying eyes. Uh, just vote for Joe Biden. And now it's, yes, the economy is terrible, but Kamala Harris, who's been vice president for three and a half years, is going to come in and fix the whole thing. It just <laughs> right. doesn't make sense. Um, let, me, uh, let me switch to, I know you're going to be in Georgia today and you're going to be talking about crime and, and uh, the border. Um, but if you look at every single Western country, especially England, Sweden, Germany, France, every one of them have a problem with uh, what, the, what they call refugees. I would call them illegal aliens. And uh, people are noticing that they're destroying the culture, the finances, crime is skyrocketing. This isn't a, a Biden-Harris problem alone. This seems to be happening in every Western country. Is this the result of a, of a global deep state? Well, I think it's certainly the result of a very suicidal set of ideas, which suggests that if you want to have any control on immigration in your own country, you are a bad person, you're a racist, et cetera, et cetera. And what this has led to is European nations and, of course, the United States being unwilling to control our borders when at least half of our political leadership just doesn't believe in it. And I think that we just have to you know, get back to some basic common sense here Uh, You don't hate anybody, but you don't necessarily want the entire world to become part of your country. And you may even believe that a country can can assimilate some measure, you know, some some measure of immigration. But that doesn't mean you can have everybody, right? It's one thing for the United States to take in a few hundred thousand people. 
It's another thing to take in 3 million people, and it's another thing to take in 30 million people, which is probably the current best estimate of the number of illegal aliens we have. And it's just preposterous to me that Democrats don't acknowledge this basic reality. And yes, you're right. Whether it's in Europe or the United States, it's led to higher crime. It's led to a lot of innocent victims that don't need uh, to have suffered what they've suffered. And it, it's right. led, I think, really to a real backlash from our um, f- against our leaders, and justifiably so. Um, let me take you to uh, the Secret Service for a second. Uh, yesterday, the New York Post uh, reported that he was using encrypted messaging and he had accounts on various platforms located in Belgium, New Zealand, and Germany. Um, are you, it's been a month. Uh, are you and, and, uh, president Trump satisfied with the investigation and the way it's going and, and the information that we have and haven't gotten? Uh, no, certainly not. I, I know I'm not. And I will say this as, you know, somebody who newly has a secret service detail and, I think the guys that I've worked with uh, are just the consummate professionals. They're great people and they're doing a good job. There clearly needs to be some better understanding of what broke about the leadership in the wake of President Trump's assassination attempt. And you know, this is frankly on Congress. Um, it's on Chuck Schumer's United States Senate. And it's on the Biden administration to get to the bottom of what mistakes were made, right? And maybe the mistakes were not intentional. You never know, of course, until you do the actual investigation, but you have to have a real investigation. And if I'm looking at this from the perspective of America's citizens, I'd be demanding that Kamala Harris, who's the vice president of the United States, actually gets to the bottom of this and empowers her government to do a real investigation that just has, has, has not happened yet. You know, you would think that they would be interested, that every politician would be interested in this, especially if you have Secret Service protection. If it is just a flawed system and a series of just bad calls and mistakes, your life is at stake. And you would think yeah. that everyone would be uh, interested in making sure that, you know, that no mistakes were made uh, uh, again. No, that's exactly right. I mean, again, you don't know, was it a couple guys who screwed up? Was it something more systematic? Was it something about the processes or the procedures? These are the sorts of things where, you know, we always believe in democratic government that sunshine is the best disinfectant. And so we really do have to have, I think, a more honest accounting of what went wrong. Obviously, some of the leadership has faced some pressure, but that, that's not really what we're talking about. We're talking about a real investigation. I know, you know Ron Johnson, my colleague from Wisconsin, a great friend, has really looked into this uh, aggressively. He's trying to get to the bottom of it. But when you're a minority senator in the minority party, there's only so much you can do. Frankly, if Chuck Schumer and Kamala Harris made this a priority, we would know everything we needed to know a month from now. It's interesting to me that um, RFK is uh, coming on probably tomorrow uh, and endorsing. Um, and then you also have Elon Musk saying that he would like a position uh, to be you know, in charge of, of cutting. Is there serious discussion about Elon Musk coming on? And with RFK, where do you think he would be best? Yeah, so tr- trying not to put the cart too much before the horse with Elon, of course, because I think he's a genius, and I think he could help us a great deal, but we have to win the election first, of course, before we give uh, Elon any any positions or any titles here. Uh, I think RFK really uh, could could do a lot for us on questions of, you know, we had 8,000 veterans, I believe, maybe more, that we kicked out of the military because they refused to take a vaccine. I'd love for RFK to take a look at that, but I haven't talked to him. I don't know what he's interested in. I think the best signal that RFK can send is, look, the Kennedy Democratic Party has transformed into the open borders, high inflation, Kamala Harris Democratic Party. And if you're like my grandparents, I mean, I was raised by blue dog, socially conservative Democrats, Glenn. If you're like my grandparents, the Kennedy Democrats are now going for Donald J. Trump and the Republicans. And I think that's a powerful message to send to the American people that the old Democratic Party was a great thing, a great institution. We didn't have to agree with it all the time, but they were patriotic people. They are no longer welcome in this crazy new thing that Kamala Harris is in charge of. You know, I'm really uh, appreciative that you uh, you came out um, and said nice things about your particular opponent who has been really raking you over the coals and 
uh, and everything else, and and that we had an honest conversation about actual politics and not nonsense. And I think the American people appreciate that. I know. You know, I, I, I appreciate that, Glenn. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, Glenn. And look, I've certainly tried to keep this focused on policy. Look. I mean, Tim Walz has got some problems, clearly. Uh, he's lied about his service record. I think his integrity is very much in question here. Right. Um, so there are certainly things that we, we um, should focus on in his record. But fundamentally, the problem is not Tim Walz, it's Kamala Harris and the lack of judgment she yeah. selected or she showed and selecting a guy who's been dishonest about his service record. And I think that we have to keep right. the pressure on Kamala Harris because the media is trying to lie about her. We have to correct the record. Well, thank you very much. Stay safe and uh, stay on the right track. Thank you so much, J.D. Thanks, Glenn. See ya.